Hey guys, it's Vince. Today in this video, we are looking at another advanced system that is custom built for a client's base requirements. Now, I wanted to do this video to cover a couple answers to many questions that I'm receiving. First and foremost, I keep getting a lot of questions due to the fact that there are so many systems now in the market. Do you build custom controllers for so-and-so? Can you build an IDS system, meaning an individual drive system, to support so-and-so? This system right here is a typical G540 system, my Master Edition version controller. This client wanted an autonomous fan controller added to it, along with the ability to uh, control his spindle from the controller in terms of cycling uh, the spindle on and off for Mach 3, as well as speed manipulation. He also required the cable to be made to go to the actual VFD that it uses a single cable, DS Flex, of course. You can see the six pin connector here. And then he's got his ferrules, which are soldered on, that will interface with his VFD. He just plugs it in down here. And one cable controls not only the spindle cycling on and off, but it also controls the uh, VFD speed manipulation. So he's all set with that. Now, this system is more advanced, of course, because I had to design a secondary bracket to support the autonomous fan control system, which you can see right here. We had to have a proper clearance, and this way all of the real estate is nicely set out. You can see the diagram back here, and this diagram is put in, like all the other diagrams in the system, so that the end user, in the event he has to service his own system, which no other vendor I know does, I give him the actual diagram so he can just turn his system to match the diagram and then he can service his own unit. And that's not only done on the autonomous fan controller, it's also done on the relay controlling the system. Same thing. And you can see the relay here wired exactly and we have our toolless mounts on the relay. We also have our toolless mounts on the ground bus bar right here. Chassis is fully grounded along with the power supply. Everything is set. His GX16 six pin also has the diagram right here for the six pin uh, actual GX16 coming into the G540, which controls the VFD's integration. So that he knows if he has to service this system, he's all set right down to the diagram on the back of the G540, which all my systems now come with, to allocate what each of the terminals are. So if you ever had to service your unit, you've got everything right there. Now, another question that comes up all the time, all the time. Then, what is the stepper noise I'm hearing when I plug in a motor to the drive? And I'm just going to show you guys, and I'm going to try to actually play what's known as stepper sing. You can see this is one of my 600 outs. I've got the solderless connector right there. I'm just going to turn on this system. Now, you're not going to hear my fan like you usually hear in all the other systems because many of you already realize I have the autonomous fan controller installed. So when I cycle this on, the only thing you'll notice is that the red LED is on the autonomous fan controller. The green LED is on our power supply, but I'm going to be quiet, and you can probably hear this motor making noise, and you hear the hum, and that's called stepper sing. And that's caused because, again, we are dealing with a micro-stepping drive, the G540, and also because the coils of the motor are being charged. You have electricity going through the coils in order to provide holding torque. Guys seem to forget that a stepper motor is not like a typical DC motor or an AC motor in that it's cycled on or off, and that's it. Stepper motors are always on once they receive power. Why? Because your robot needs holding torque so that the axis does not move. That's why the shaft is locked. So again, what you're hearing is the motor is always under constant amp draw because of the fact that everything is always turned on. So seeing this, seeing how these systems are built, once again, it, I feel it really justifies a lot. I'm going to just power this down and unplug the motor. And then we're going to test the AFC unit because I get questions on that a lot. Just unplug it. You never want to unplug a motor, or any accessory for that matter, with your controller on regardless of the brand. Now I'm going to type, turn on the unit again, and I'll show you how the AFC unit works. We've got our probe right down here, and she can see it. It's screwed in, and it's also using a uh, thermal adhesive for proper heat conduction. I'm going to turn it on, our heat gun, and you'll hear it kick on. And 
what you're seeing is the yellow LED indicates that the PWM signal, which is the AFC controller actually works with, it, it actually is receiving that signal and the temperature uh, is actually raised enough to increase the fan speed based on the voltage from PWM. No different, similar to what happens with your VFD when the G540 sends its 0 to 10 volt signal. I'm not sure if her phone could pick it up, but the yellow LED is actually beginning to flicker. And you can hear the fan just slowly kicking back until that thermosistor actually drops in temperature. And once it reaches a certain temperature, just like your AC in your house, it'll turn off the fan and therefore provide a silent running system. And it's, it's pretty amazing, as the uh, signal keeps dropping, the voltage once again keeps going down, you're still getting that yellow flicker on that LED. Now this unit also has a built-in alarm that will allow the end user, in the event of anything that happens with overheating, the alarm will sound, letting them know that, hey, you need to turn the system off. Once again, this has been toollessly mounted, and of course, uh, the bracket was printed by me using nylon carbon fiber with my MakerBot. If you could just rotate around. That's my MakerBot Method X carbon fiber. That's a $6,000 commercial grade 3D printer. Mattel is using it. Lots of other brands are using it. And this unit is set. So I think uh, the client will be very happy. But once again, I want you guys to understand. I'm just going to power it down now. I want you guys to understand the level of detail that these systems have uh, when you're justifying what's on the market. All of these graphics are based on whatever custom accessories the client requires. If you have something that you need done, if you request something to be done, I can add it to the system. This is what you see here. This is what most client, most vendors excuse me, will not do because number one, you need the equipment, and number two, you also need to have all of the schematics to work with the components so that your end users are then equipped with the knowledge they require to service their system. This is imperative to me in order to make you guys stronger at what you're doing because honestly, unless you plan on mailing your system back all the time for servicing, and I've stated this before, there's no point to that. Plus with the master edition enclosure, he's already got his GX16s mounted with dust covers. He's got four three pin on this side. On this side, he has one three pin for an additional relay. These are typically used for inputs on the G540. And then, of course, as stated earlier, this is the six pin GX16, which once again manipulates the VFD and also cycles the spindle on and off. One actual connector. So, again, guys, I hope the video has been helpful. I hope you've learned something. Uh, I am extremely busy right now. If you're requesting quotes, I'm doing my best to get back to you as soon as possible. If you have any questions, I'd love to hear from you. Thank you for your support. Take care.